And guys, before we start, I, I do want to um, take a minute to tell you guys that um, I'm not a financial advisor. I do not have credentials to be a financial advisor. I do not even take my financial advice, and I'm not expecting you guys to take my financial advice because it is illegal to give financial advice when you're not a certified or licensed financial advisor. So if you, and if you are in need of financial advice, contact your local financial advisor and they'll be sure to help you navigate the world of trading. I can't promise you that they won't be working for the billionaire class or any special interests, but I will say that they certainly will guide you in, in some direction within the financial markets. And because that's the way our laws are, where you can only receive financial advice from them, it's best for you to follow the law and, you know, go to them. So um, now that we have our bias, uh, this is our one hour bias. Because you, you can get the bias from different time frames, not just, you know, um, a specific time frame you can get your s and d's from from the time frame you're trading on but you could also get a bias from where you have an idea of of price going um you know on on other time frames so to help reinforce whether you're looking for buys for the day or whether you're looking for sales for the day um all right so we have this area here. Let me explain this this trade real quick for you guys, um, because you you might see it happen to the top side here. But let me just explain how I saw this. I mean, this is obviously you know where the market opened up. But what I realized with this particular area, um, let me move this just in case you guys uh, may not be able to see it. What I realized with this particular area is you see price shifts down price ends up taking out the low that's here. It took out this low with this body closure below the low. Then price flips to the top side. And what did I mention when you have a flip to the top side after a break of structure to the downside? That you have to look for an area of an important low that price may trade above before retracing. So when I saw this push back up, I saw this candle take out this high right here. Now, why am I using this high? I'm using this high because this is intermediary structure. So this is a low. Sorry, this is a high. This is a low. This is a high. This didn't give us a low here. You see this little wick here? Because it didn't go below this. But this did. So what do we now have? Price possibly returning to the upside. So we break this low with this wick here. I mean, sorry, this high. We break this high with this wick here. I haven't had my coffee as of yet. I'm so sorry. Just a little... Uh, disoriented or and and I'm gonna get it together uh, my coffee's being warmed up now but um, uh, by me of course so I'm gonna have to cut from this and go get it but um you know you have this high that was taken out and then price traded back within the area so what I usually you know mention on this channel is when you have a high a previous high that was taken out and then price trades away from it, usually you're getting a pullback into the area that price just came from or price just created. You're getting a pullback into that area and then you're taking price long. So I had this particular price. Price wasn't here yet, but I put this line here and I, you know, put this arrow heading out of the area and you know, what, what you might see is price looked like it was going to return to that area after the pullback. But what did I mention? I mentioned that you have pullbacks when highs are ran. You know, you're not playing the high with a, a you know, sell limit order here to come down. You're not doing that. 
but you're just observing, okay, this high was now taken out. So price could potentially shift back into this area. We did get a shift into this area, but price quickly moved away. So what do we have? We end up having an entire area that is unmitigated. Here, unmitigated. Price didn't return to this area to mitigate this area before leaving. So you have a, a small imbalance here. You have price and an unmitigated area. So this is an area that you could potentially trade from when price comes back to it, whether it's a reaction from the area, whether it's, you know, um, you know, just it, it, it runs from the area all the way to take out a high. Now, once you get in on this, you're going to look when, when price comes into this area, you're going to look for a bullish flip, this same type of flip that we just observed where price went up, took out a previous high, traded back into the area and then left. This same type of thing here should happen if price chooses to come down into this area, mitigate it and then leave. You're going to have this happen before price leaves to take out the new high or the new low. So this is why you pay attention to these areas where price flips. And just as I mentioned, I said that you could possibly have it on the top side which that's exactly what we have. We have price trading higher. This is an important low. This is making some, some highs and lows in here, but there's no body closure above to solidify this low yet. So price can continue to come down into this area until here. This candle closes above the high of the low that was established. So because this candle closed above, we have a stronger indication that, you know, price is going to continue higher. It closed above. It did not make a lower low after it established this low. It did not make a lower low. It actually made a higher low. So then we have price come up into this area right here. We have price come up into this area and what does it do? Create another high for us. So what's what's established here? The new low is established here when a new high is created. A new low is validated. I should say that when a new high is created. So we had this new low put in and we had a new high created. And then what happened? The low was ran. So what are we looking for when the low is ran? We're looking for price to retrace back up into this area and we're taking it short. So a lot of people really don't understand, you know, like they, they have issues on, on where to get in from with, with trading from certain areas. And it's just because they're not really noticing the price action going on in this. So when you have an idea of the price action, what's happening right now in this moment with price and you're monitoring it, this is the one minute. So you have to pay attention to this because it all happens fast, but you have the hourly. Now you could examine the hourly and set up a, a an hourly move just based on this alone. We went to the hourly and saw this S and D here. We saw the hourly take out a high to the left. We said when price trades above a high, usually have a pullback after. This is on the one minute that we're watching this pullback, but we got the high taken out on a higher time frame. So because it was taken out on a higher time frame, we should end up having a trend back into this area before price pushes up again. If price is going to push up again, how do we know price is pushing up again? We know it when we notice this same requirement this same setup on the downside and when we notice that on the downside it gives us time to set set us up for a buy as well as set us up to get out of this trade because now the retracement is finished and we possibly trending to the top side and we don't get out of the buy from what you know when, when we catch it below 
We don't get out of it until we see bearish behavior created up here. And then it lets us know, let's get out. So, you know, in that explanation, you have this as the area of entry. You have this as the stop loss, the high as the stop loss in which you're looking to take the short from. And where are you shorting? To the next possible area, which there's this possible area. After price left it, there was no mitigation to it. This entire area here, price pushed to the top side. So what could you potentially have? You could potentially have a movement in price that comes here. You know, or you might have it, I don't know, come here. So let me take this. Put that there. And you put that there and you just you just see which one is the more likely area for price to tap into and go. A lot of the times it's an area where there's an imbalance that's near. Do we have the imbalance? Yeah, we do. Right here. It's an area that price hasn't come back into. Do we have the area that price didn't come back into? Yeah, right here. You know, and, and a lot of people call this choppy. But if you really do pay attention to what's happening here, you have one low put in. And then you have a series of lows being created and ran. So when price is manipulating the lows, it's showing you that it still wants to go to the top side. And you get that. Where is the established low? Here. Because price never came back to this low. So guess where they started buying? Here. And after they buy all the way up, they begin to when they get to a particular, you know, area that they're ready to get out, they begin to dump. Selling their profits. Sorry. Selling their profits. After this push up. Because remember, we can't move the market. Retail, we, we can't. Like, you know, us trading on these little accounts, even if we had, you know, $100 million to trade with. We're not moving this market at all. This is a market that the banks move in. So the best way to trade this market is to trade with the banks. Use these little footprints that they leave behind. These are these are little small things that that little small footprints that they leave back here for us to be able to learn to trade from. And as we're using these, you know, like you, you can't do something and, and, and not leave any evidence behind. There's always something left. It's like a, a kid stealing cookies out of the cookie jar. What do you usually see? Crumbs of cookies all over their face, hands dirty, or a jar left open, or one cookie missing. But either way, within that scenario, you always can figure out where the evidence was left. Where did they slip up? And you go back and, and you, you analyze that. And that's what I've seen trading in these markets. In, in all of these markets, that's what I've seen. The little footprints that they leave behind. So I know other people like to use Wyckoff. Other people like to use EMAs, Divergence with the RSI, all these different things, these, these different patterns, stuff like that. You know, I've I got rid of all of that. I started that way. And yeah, some people can be profitable with that, you know, but an easier way for me, an easier understanding for me is using these little footprints that are left in the market. Now, timing these is is incredibly, you know, scary and, and anxious sometimes because what you have is you often have you know where sometimes you can get a fake out here because look you have you have this low 
right here. You have a high here on this candle. So if you look, this candle here came just above the high, like a little. Let me let me actually zoom in so you guys can see it. So you didn't think I'm lying and making up stuff. Right here. This was our low. And this actually, so no, look at that. This is our low. This is our high. Why? Because it's low into high and then low is created. So this is our low. This is our low. This is our high. We come down here, we shift price downward and we create a lower low. Why does price still go up? You might be wondering, yeah, why does price still go up after we took out the low? The reason why is because we didn't put in another high yet. Look, look at this. This is, this is the last low. This is the last high. Did we get a candle closure above? Sorry. Did we get a candle closure above this high right here? No, we didn't. No candle closure above the high before the low was ran. So because we didn't get a candle closure above the high and then the low was taken out, we're not taking this trade. We're not taking the pullback of this trade into the continuation down. Because we first need a high established and then a low taken out. And after the high is established, the new high that's supposed to come from over here, it did not come after the high is established, like it, it broke structure to the upside, body structure to the upside. You don't have that. You just have a candle that closed here. We put in a low here and then we came here. We don't have a candle closure above here, above this high. So technically, when it drives below the low, we're not looking to take the pullback into this area. Not saying that it can't pull back into this area and go because it can. But the likelihood is, is much smaller when there hasn't been a new high established before running the low. And that's why I said that when we were here, I would like to get a close above this area or a couple candles within this area. So if I get a close above this area and then the low is ran, then cool. I could look for a pullback and then take, take the trade down. But if I don't get a close above, then we're still going high. And we kept going high until here. And what did we get? We got the low. We got the candle closure above the high. Candle closure above. And then we trade it back below it right here. Where do we trade back below it? On this candle. Actually, I'm sorry. This was our this was our, our low. I'm sorry. Forgive me. This was our high. This was our low. This was the new high. This was the run of the low. Price pull back. And then we take out from this area. And now we look for some bullish behavior to this downside. And that's how you like if you were in this trade and you were expecting it to go down here and then you had price shift up right here and come back to this area, you know, a lot of the times you might be trying to figure out, well, is price going to push all the way back up to this area and take me out. There's a possibility. That's why we partial out at certain areas of price. We'll partial out at certain structural areas, low here, low here. Some people might partial out here, you know, or some people will wait to partial out down here, hoping that price gets there. And if it doesn't, they get taken out at break even cool risk free trade. You know, you didn't technically lose, I mean, except for the commission, you know, but you got to make sure that you, you take some profit off of the table. 
runners will get whatever other profit that that you know you you didn't get but there's multiple setups that happen and when you have these multiple setups happening you can partial out at all these different all these different trades that you you're going to take you can partial out on it so this was before the market opened this trade down here was after um the market opened and then you have another setup that's there so when you have all of these different setups this is actually where i thought it was going to reject from but price still pushed higher You, you tend to get these setups to where, you know, you're, you're catching major moves, 161 pips, 117 pips, 126 pips. And you can partial out at half of those, partial out at different areas. Now, with, with this particularly coming down, I did not partial out out of this um, because I actually saw this low get ran and because this low here was ran i realized it'd be another pullback up and then when price gets to the area that you can actually trade from you get a strong rejection out of that area then you get a return into the area and then a push out so most people are probably wondering why didn't you take this trade here right here Stops behind here, behind the area. Why didn't you take this trade up? Somebody could have very well taken this trade. Right into this area, tap, and it goes. But a lot of the times, you get another pullback into the area, and that's where some traders see the double bottom, and then they jump in to go. And you do oftentimes get a pullback you know, sometimes when price is strongly reacting from that area, you do get a, a second pullback into that area before price continues. And that's exactly what happened on this side. So if if I was told to, well, well if I created a bias and was like, you know what, let me just trade from this particular area, I could have. But if price didn't go where I was expecting it to go, which was right here, then it would have came back and stopped me out. Stopped me out right there. And then went in the direction that I thought it was going in. And this is why you want to wait for the confirmation of bullish behavior. What is the confirmation of bullish behavior? Look, price came down. Price flipped above the last high. Ended up taking us down here below this low but then you had another push up how did we get involved in this because we spotted right here that this high was being taken out so we had a pullback and it took us right up to our area now could we have taken this long yeah further yeah we could have but that wasn't that that wasn't the area that i was targeting you know so it's all about a matter of of managing it because with right here, you know, I got out, but yes, I could have still stayed in and waited until I saw some bearish behavior take place within this area. And if price came out of this area and I'm still in this trade, I know that you might have a pullback back into this area here. And this is where I'll get out and get in a cell and then take it down. But I need to see the bearish behavior take place in this area to know that I'm selling from it, just like it did up here. I need that to happen. And and what do you have? You you had that here. Remember, I said there's some bullish behavior that you want to pay attention to. What do we have? You know, within this intermediary structure here, we have right within here. Low, high, low, high, low, run of the high. Not just this high, but this high. Ran it. Pushed up, wrapped back around into the area, and then took us for a long back up. 
So this is something that you want to pay attention to because it helps you to manage the trades that you're in. It really, really helps you to, to stay in these trades. Like there's some people that will cut their trade here. And then if price ends up melting further down to this side, it's like, oh man, I should have stayed in. And what do they do? They turn around and they try to jump in on another trade here. And when they jump in on another trade here, when this low is ran, what are we expecting to happen? We're expecting the pullback into this area. So they go chasing down down here when this low is ran they go chasing it hoping that it's going to go further oh man bearish momentum coming out of the area yeah got to get in on that and then price t triggers them in runs the low and then take us back for a pullback and now your stop loss is ran because more than likely you would have put the trade here put it behind a previous structural area or even possibly put it behind here but who wants a stop loss like that who wants a huge stop loss hoping that price doesn't come into the area but then you don't know where price is going that's a whole bunch of uncertainty in this one trade if you were running and chasing it so we had this bullish flip to the downside and now we're looking for possibly a bearish flip and we may not get that you know we we might have price pull back up into this area and and just continue to go above because our original bias is that it's coming here within this this s and d zone and the imbalance that's between this area but how do we know if it's not going to go there? We know that by observing if there's bearish behavior that takes place. Anywhere that bearish behavior takes place up here, anywhere that we notice it, then we'll flip our bias. And, and that could be temporary. That bearish behavior up here, it could certainly be temporary. Because it can just flip bullish just to come back mitigate this area and then it could flip bearish sorry come back mitigate this area and then flip bullish again from this same area and this is what i'm talking about with multiple trades multiple setups that you could use you can use multiple setups within just a day's worth of trading and not even a day within a couple hours this is the one minute time frame so between now and and 4 p.m. when, you know, all volume kind of leaves the market. Between now and 4 p.m., there's a bunch of quality setups that you can get with this. A bunch of quality setups. You know, again, we, we saw this here. We could have took the tap in that area and took it up to maybe this S and D. This probably would have been my partial area. Why? Or this would have been the partial area. One, because... This is um, the previous high that we're running from this area. So when we run the high, we know that we get a pullback into the area. So I'm parceling out at here because I know this, this is going to come back to me anyway. So if it takes me out at break even, I'm looking for the next setup. What happens? Th this is all within, let me look at this, this, uh, so from the time price came into here to the time that we got a second entry, this is 16 minutes, 16 minutes, two possible entries, two possible setups here within 16 minutes after taking a full setup into this area, 161 pips, the one lot size, that's $161 on a 10 lot size, that's $1,610. That can certainly work for you. Short move, one minute time frame. This happened in 43 minutes. This is in no volume. This happened in six. So trading in, in times where there's volume, that's something that you want to make sure 
that you're doing. So, you know, you have faster setups on a one minute. This you have to wait a pretty long time to get to. So, you know, we have this happen plenty of times around this this map. This happens plenty of times. And when this happens, you have trades coming from those areas. Because you you have you have this retracement. You have a long going into this retracement from here. Let's say your stops was were behind, you know, the area. What did I say I like to see? The candle. You see this this candle here? The bearish candle went down. The next candle opened up. Took out the low of the previous candle and then traded above. What did I tell you about the areas that I like to see trades coming out of? I like to see that and it gives me confidence to stay in past this high being ran. And to stay in up until maybe the S&D area that's that's up here. The unmitigated S&D zone. Because I have specific rules to when I'm finding a setup and when I'm executing it. So, you know, you, you have this area that you could have potentially traded from. 78 pips. Again, 10 lot size, $780. You know, like this is this is making more than people make in a week. Just with these rules and using these very short movements. Because this is this is what, six minutes? You made some money weekly salary in six minutes because of precision. Because you chose to go the extra mile and learn this as much as you could. And now you know, like the, these are so easy to find everywhere. They're so easy to find. Like I see people say, oh, you know, uh, you know, 318860 is an important area. And if price doesn't hold there, then we're going to have a huge drop, you know, and they and they make their predictions based on the lowest area that price is in, you know, currently. And if it does run this area, yes, you may have a drop into this area here because obviously all of this down here is unmitigated. You could have a drop into this area. You could have a drop into this area. But we know that when it runs the low first, we got to be careful because it'll run the low and then have a huge push back to the top side. So it's best not to get in on an impulsive trade like that. But this is the stuff that people are teaching, you know, other traders to to trade with. I know, um, you know, I, I haven't started making short videos yet explaining this, but I do want to make shorter videos that you guys could go over and learn more and more from um, to be able to, you know, time these these different entries in the market is you, you got to have a bunch of exposure to it, truthfully speaking, like over and over. You have to have hours of it. Go in the room. Sorry, I um, <laughs> I had to uh, tell him get out the kitchen. He loves rummaging things in the kitchen, so he goes to his playroom. But um, you know, you 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 have this to where this happens, and look look at what this has given us. This hasn't given us a high yet. The price broke above. So because this hasn't given us a high as of yet. We're still bullish on this. This is the last high. This gave us the low. There's no high above this. Just a bunch of wicks. Now, some people see wicks as rejections. Like right here. Some people would take this area. And be like, okay, this is a this is a major rejection area. And they'll go like this. There was some support here. Broke through. It's a major rejection area. And their rules are simply, if it gets rejected from here once and trade away, if there's a second rejection, you take that rejection out of the area. 
and you target this low. So they're taking cells from here and they're putting their stops just above an area, you know, like somewhere up here. Like maybe the first the first high above this or possibly even the, the last high that's there. And they're they're hoping that the trade leaves the area here. They're hoping that the trade leaves this area and doesn't come up here to their stop loss. So then they see price breaking above the area and it's like, all right, chat, um, you know, this could just be a fake out. It just might poke through and then come back down. You know, like they're, they're making up all these different things as to what price could do in this area. And it's all off of their own opinion. What price can do. It's not off of what is price showing us right now? What is price showing us? And what did I mention when price wants to go bearish? This is this is not like I'm I'm not ever supporting this style of trading or anything. So even if this does go in this direction, you know, I'm just giving an example of it. I do not trade this way and I do not support this type of trading um because it it lacks the skill and the awareness to sit there and pay attention to what's happening in real time. We're just saying, okay, it's going to come here, reject, come back here, and then we're going to trade it coming out of this area. That's very easy to, to analyze and, and to hope that this setup works. That's very easy for anybody coming in. Oh, look at the areas where it's support and an in-term resistance. It's very easy for people. So people are going to be more inclined to, to learn this way and trade this way. But there are other ways to get to the same conclusion up here where, you know, when you get to that conclusion, you're sure of the trade coming out of this area. You're not just hoping. And that's why when, when they have those little things here, this is exactly what they do. When they have these little things here, they go just like this. And I, and I see a couple traders do it too. They go just like this. They go like this. Right here. And they go, oh yeah, chat, we partialed out right here at, you know, what, whatever, whatever it is, 21 pips, 21 pips, let's go chat. Everybody is writing W's in the chat or, or whatever it is that they're putting in the chat. And this is, this is what they're doing. This is how they're teaching people to trade. Now it's just runners. We're going to let the runners run. Yeah, it was a good day with just this. This is the quality of, of, you know, like the years of experience that people take to learn things in this in industry. They come in this industry and they look at this. They start trading this way. And they catch a little bit and people be like, yeah, I made so much money on that movement. You know, it's 20 pips. So if you were trading on a 10 lot size with 20 pips, you know, you have 200 bucks. But... If you were trading on a hundred lot size, then, you know, you have $2,000. And when I personally trade, I trade on a 40 lot size. So you can understand the numbers that work out, you know, with, with this. And it all comes from having that particular skill set to be able to understand that this is not the way to trade. Because if this was, we, we, we could teach five-year-olds this and they could retire their parents just doing this. I see them do this in, in, in Roblox and in, in, in a, a Minecraft. This is child's play. That's not how you trade at all. And that's not how you teach people to trade. Because what indication do we have that Price could potentially be coming down. We look at what price is doing right now in this moment. 
and we look at the areas that price might have tapped into. So if you want to take a look at what price did and and where it went, we see that price hit our supply area right here. This cluster of candles here. Price hit our supply area. Tapped then traded away. Now, when we see all of these trade, all of these, these, you know, candles around our entry, seven minutes worth of candles, you know, a lot of the times we may see, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, sometimes just going sideways in that area before price ends up taking us the other way. But we don't we don't get in because it tapped our area because the same way it tapped our area is the same way it can go right through it. So we don't get in when price is tapping the area that's catching a falling knife. Where we're getting in is when we start to see the bearish behavior that we discussed. When we start to see that playing out. Because what, what what might we have in this area if price wants to go down? What might we have? In this area, what we may have is price shift out of the area. Let's say it shifts out of the area. Runs the low that we have as an important low. Then it could take us back into the area and then take us out of the area like that. So if we had a run of this low, yes, that that is something that, you know, we should consider doing when taking this trade, not just because it tapped here, because we had rules that we followed in terms of if price produces this here's how we respond to it and this is what you get this is how you get safer entries into these areas now although i had mentioned that this is you know a um a supply area you could also adjust it to this here why? Because we have this low and we have this high. So within this entire area, between this low and high, when price trades away from it, you have to look and, and get an idea of where price usually reacts off of. And whatever area, while you're back testing, you usually see price react off of, you would go and start to utilize that area on these pullbacks. And not just the pullbacks, you would utilize this area down here in this area that wasn't touched. You would utilize it down here. So you already have the anticipation of areas set up, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're catching a trade from there. You're watching to see what is price doing in that area before I take a trade from there. Is it giving me any type of, of bullish behavior coming out of here? You know, is it giving me any type of bearish behavior coming out of here? And when you start to notice that, then you start to see that, you know, it lines up. And as I mentioned down here, I said that usually when you get strong rejections out of certain areas, you usually have a double entry or, or a double tap within this area. So you get the double tap and then price takes us out. Usually that's what you get. You know, when there's like a, a strong push out of a particular area, um, we, we had this, you know, where we got in here 
Then price came back up towards the entry, near the entry. And remember how I mentioned you can catch this buy up to this area, but you want to be mindful of what happens in this area. Because then when you start to see some bearish behavior start to take place here, then you will go ahead and take the trade out. Yeah, you, you'll start to see this. You start to see this. So we have this as our high. Price shifted above here. This being actually let let me let me use this and and actually mark it out. Uh, this I should have probably used this let me so you have here so you can take uh, this and this this didn't have a closure to this And we have a top here. Yeah, let me just double check. Actually, this might be it here. Yeah, let me see. Sorry, I'm just checking the level so I can give you guys um accurate information. Uh, so. We have this, this is the low, this is the high, this is the low. No, it's here. So it's... Within intermediary structure, I'm conflicted because this candle here gave us both a. Mm, no, I'll keep this. Yeah, I'll keep this. So this is the low that I'm expecting to be ran, this important low. If this low is ran, then we could have a reversal to the downside. If this low is not ran, then we're just going to continue higher out of this area the same way that we did this area. Because you see it kind of looks the same, the slanting upward, you get a pullback and then price shifts higher. You have the slant again upward you get a pullback and there's a possibility that price ends up shifting higher above this so if price shifts above this we have the possibility of let me see there's a possibility that this high is ran yeah and what happens when we run highs? We run the high and then we pull back into the area and possibly continue. But that's just what our bias is. We actually look at price to see what price is doing when it happens. And that will determine whether we're taking the trade from that area or not. And the structure at 1030, but the structure and long entry at 10 is a little confusing 1050 entry is based on structure to the left 
the 1050 entry that's here oh you're saying that you you're not understanding why there was an entry here anthony correct i just want to make sure um because if it's this entry we use this entry on intermediary structure not necessarily here this this trade we were taking into this area because this was a possible area that price could react from to the upside so that's why we took this trade here and this particular entry right here is because we were looking at um into i, I don't know if you were here during the explanation but we were looking at you know intermediary structure so if you look at these these wicks these wicks are highs and lows too these these wicks that I'm I'm drawing this line on these are highs and lows too so when we have these highs and lows coming down if you go to like the seconds time frame you'll see it exactly like this whole thing but it would just be within this area when you come back to the 1 minute time frame so we had the run of this high right here we ran that high break of structure to the top side. So when we get that break, we're anticipating a pullback back into the area and then we're taking it long. And where do we take these long to? We take these long to the, these longs to unmitigated areas that price could potentially react from. That's where we're going. So with, with this in particular, the reason why I pointed to, sorry, it's actually here. This area is because if you look at this, this right here is, this is supply. This is a supply area. This one wick right here is a supply area. There was no mitigation. So, you know, price shifted towards the downside and the next candle that opened did not go into the area it traded away from it. So because it traded away from it, it's considered a supply area. It wasn't, it's, it's an unmitigated area, an untouched area. And you also have this here as well, but these are more so like the, the smaller ones. These are more so on the seconds time frame, the previous time frame, you know, like, like something lower than this. So if you were to go to, I don't know, this is the one minute, maybe you were to go to the one second, on the one second within these areas, if you drew these lines and went to the one second, you would see this as larger areas like this with a bunch of, you know, pullbacks going to the area that it's going in. So with this, we, we noticed that based on candlestick structure, not you know, secondary structure or, or any type of overall structure. It was just within candle structure itself. But we had mentioned that if we saw some bullish behavior happening down here, then we would look to take a trade back up. But this happens all over the map. It happens down here, happens down here. You know, it, it happened up here. This is how we got involved into these trades because where they were happening, the areas that they were happening in, this is how we got involved. So yeah, this is it's it's structure, but this is structure really on a lower time frame. And you probably have to be a little more advanced um, sometimes to to be able to uh, monitor those time frames because they move so fast. Oh my gosh! Like, could you? And and it doesn't even look like it's it's um it's candlesticks. It's just like little lines, you know, little green and red lines, really. But if you use this um, uh, no gap candle, then it would create a full candle on that time frame. But if you if you use that time frame, it takes a lot of getting used to and adjusting. It's like a crash course going to the, the one second. It moves extremely fast. So you just want to make sure that, you know, you can handle price moving so fast in that direction. So, again, I mentioned that these these little wicks here are. Um, you know, S and D zones on, on smaller time frames. So what do you have? You have when price goes into this S and D zone, you get a reaction out of it. Look, this wick, this candle with this wick came up in here. 
this one came down and went out of that area. Some people are just taking trades from here. People with, with you might have people with zero spreads. They're just taking that. That six pips could be 6,000 easily. If you knew how to, to trade these areas and trade the reactions away from this, that six, six grand easily. Just on a little small move like that. Of course, you need more capital. But when you look at these S and D zones, as I mentioned in, in some of my other um, videos, when you look at these S and D zones, oftentimes you have it to where there is a reaction when price touches it. So remember how we mentioned that this was our S and D zone here. This was our uh, supply area. You have price reject from it and look at this rejection, 61 pip rejection. You get a six pip rejection from a seconds time frame. But here you get a 61 pip rejection just from the zone, from the zone alone. I'm not trying to be Dr. Seuss or anything, but you, you get a, a reaction from that zone where you could get a quick scalp off of. So these areas can definitely help you with that. Uh, I'm always looking for an ABCD and didn't see it there like the short entry things. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, that's what like, you know, the, I believe it's Elliott wave theory or something like that. Um, so for me, those theories just, just make it easier to spot certain things, but ultimately you want to like grow out of that and just start to look at it from candlestick structure. When you're looking at candlesticks, when you're reading so fine tuned that you can get an idea of what could possibly happen with candlesticks then and and that's on a microscopic level then you know as a whole things start to just you know add up and and become a lot different for you it starts to look different you know there's just a bunch of stuff that a bunch of possibilities that you have just knowing that you can apply the fine tuned candlestick structure to you know, the, the overall structure, because now if you go to like the 15 minute, now you could use candlestick structure here in the 15 minute. And you could start using this for, you know, trading the same way. So if you have, you have this high, I mean, you have this low, sorry, this high is presented. You have this that comes back down and doesn't take out the low but we don't have a new high created because a high didn't go above this. So when a high goes above this, it validates this low. And when this low is broken, then you'll have a pullback into this area and then a continuation outside of it. And that's how you read it on candlesticks. So if this, if, if this doesn't give us another high, this is not the low that we're looking for to be broken. This is the low that we're looking for to be broken. And if you can learn that with candlesticks, then, you know, when, when you're trading on, on like a one minute time frame and you're overall looking for like structure within this, then you start to get a better idea of, you know, what's possibly happening, um, in price. And you can catch these longer moves from, because some people think the one minute time frame is a time frame that, you know, you trade like very short scalps from. They think it's, it's like that, you know, you're, you're in and out just within a couple seconds. Oh, that's a scalp there. Okay. Oh yeah. I got a short move there. You know, like that's all they're doing. All right. 10 pips. I'm out. That's good. I'm good with that. They do that. Exactly. And a lot of it is because they don't actually have an idea of, you know, where price is going, have an idea of structure, have an idea of what is our target. And this area was our target. And when we got to our target, now we look to see if there was some bullish behavior that was happening. And that lets us know to get out. So if you were in this trade and you were coming down to here and we came all the way here, but ended up flipping back up, we got a retracement back. In <coughs> Sorry, we got a retracement right here. <coughs> So now this becomes where you get out. 
Of course, this is not going to just come straight back and hit your stop loss. Unless like some type of high volume news happened or whatever it is. Of course, it's not going to come back there and do that. But you'll have it to where price will give you an area or a landing pad for you to get out. And not have to get out short of profit at 64 pips. You were able to come back and get out at, you know, 167. So almost double of what you would have got out if you saw this high right here. So you you create rules to it. I went back and see the structure on the five second chart. Yes, that's good. You know, you, you could definitely, and anything that I say, go back and test it because it's, you're going to see it in real time. Like go back and look at whatever it is that I explained, go and reproduce it for yourself and you're going to see results. You don't have to pay for this. You don't have to, you know, have any conversations with me about it. You don't need to talk to anybody. We're just taking these principles and these concepts that I teach. And I'm telling you, trading will become so simple for you. Extremely simple for you. You know, it doesn't have to be hard. Learning this is hard. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, my gosh. I I remember the times where where I would just stare at charts for hours. Now, every now and again, I'll just go back and look at a chart and be like, oh, okay, that's probably going to happen. And just draw something and then go back and, and take a peek at, at whether it actually happened. Like I do that on a lot of different um, pairs that that I don't necessarily trade. You know, like here's gold right here. I'm going to show you the same thing because this works on everything, not just. Um, Forex, this is on stocks, this is on uh, commodities, this is on everything, like futures, all of that. Crypto, whatever you want to trade, this all works on it. It works the same exact way. The same exact way. So, you know, we we have it to where we get this, we have this high, then we get another low put in. And what do we do? We take out the high that was validated by the new low that was put in. So we had price come up around here. I was expecting after price went above this, I was expecting price to come back into this area. But it didn't. Right, right there and then when it flipped above, it didn't. But this was another area to... Just consider if price came back into it. So I had put this here, you know, placed my um, stop loss right above this area because this is such a small area that I, I did not expect a reaction that would put in a new low from right here. So this did come here. There was a reaction that took us down, but this reaction took us down into the trade that we were taking. And if you wanted to minimize your stop loss, this is because I didn't go back and look at it. So this is the type of trading that I say people do. They set up an area and then they wait for price to come back into. But if I actually wanted to minimize the amount of pips that my stop loss was, then I would begin to look into this area. So I see it to where, according to this candlestick structure, let me uh, uh, show you because I feel like I could show things better than I could tell it and, and, and showing it would be very helpful for you guys. So you have this area here. You have this low, this high, this low, this high. What do we have here? A break of the low. And then what do we get? We don't get another low. We get a high put in. High is ran. Now this ran three of the highs, quick push up on the second time frame that this looks like trend line touches going down. Price runs all of the trend line touches. So you have a lot of traders who would trade with trend lines and they don't understand that price is, is just storing up liquidity to come back and run it. And that's exactly what it did. It ran it. Now, granted, this is the second time frame, so the run on this is is not necessarily uh, that deep. I guess this is 10 pips on gold, so 
it, it could be depending on what your lot size is, but that's why you manage your risk. We had back to what we were saying, we had a run of this high. So when the high is ran, we're looking for a pullback into this area. Mind you, this is candlesticks alone. Like we're not using large areas for this. So you have a run back into this area. So we take, sorry, we take this here. We place it to, like like I said, when you go and back test it, you'll see different areas that respond more than others. This might be the 50%. This could be the 70, 80%. So this maybe on the 80% would have been a little more precise in the tap. Either way, you're looking for price to come into this area here. We don't know where it's going to stop, but then take us long. So our stop loss is directly behind this area here. And we're looking to target whatever area that we believe price is coming to. So price already came to this area here. We're not necessarily looking for this area to to be the area we trade from. But what we're looking for is areas that have volume in it. And I could, um, you know, just highlight it for you. There's volume in this area here. There's volume up in this area here. There's volume in this area. And there's... Uh, I would say maybe more of this area volume here. So we're taking our trades and M I know you had, um, asked me this earlier if you're still here, um, prior to coming on the stream. Um, we're take, we're targeting areas with volume in it. So because we know there's no volume in these areas, what are we doing? We're bypassing this. We're looking to take this to the next possible area of volume. So if you look at this, this is a one to 10, 10 to one, whatever you guys want to call it. This is 99 cents for your stop loss. You know, nine, nine, nine pips, nine pips, nine pip bets, you know, whatever you want to call it. But this is, this is 99 cents on gold. I'm saying that it's, you know, it's a dollar stop loss or a nine pip stop loss, almost 10. And you're taking this up to an area of volume. You found this here and you were able to minimize your risk when price came back into your area and you looked for the flip. But if you were just a trader who preferred to wait and just have the order trigger you in, you have your stops behind here and your targets is the same, the volume. Look at the difference between these two trades. Both of them are great trades. One had way less risk than the other. It's 10 to one. This is four to one. This, if your stop loss was hit, you'd have been out in 10 pips. This, if your stop loss was hit, that's 25 pips. And remember, with pips, the measurement of pips can mean anything, you know, depending on the lot size you're trading on. But this is the reality of waiting for price to get into your area and then looking for an area to trade from. You do not need to have limit orders or, or buy stop orders or what you, you do not need to have it up here waiting for price to come to your area here, maybe and you place your stop directly behind here and then you get ran out of the park. Ran out of the park. And I see this happen with a lot of traders on stream. Every morning, my morning routine is to go and check the traders who traded in London session. And every time that I'm done trading, I go and check the traders who trade in the morning session. And then I realize that there's barely anybody to trade in the Asian session. And I guess because the volume is so slow and they're not able to really like jump in with an impulsive movement, but the Asian session follows, you know, rules. It follows structure. So if you get in on the Asian session, these moves are a lot more cleaner and they're shorter too, in terms of like, you know, if you were getting in on an area and where the stop loss would be, they would be shorter stop losses. You'd have like, like, 13 pip stop losses sometimes, 10 pip stop losses, 
you know this one was 19 here that, that we had mentioned but you you'd have a bunch of stop losses that are very short i'm trying to find a, a an asian session that i might have uh, traded in but i don't see it that's here look at this 10 pip stop loss 189 pips in the asian session 189 pips or or whatever that was yeah 189 pips in the asian session the moves are a lot cleaner you know the volume is slower so you can time the market a little better with with these slower movements but i had it coming up to my area tapped in took me out it, it doesn't have to be rocket science. We ran the two, we ran the equal lows. We went into a particular area to the left. I don't know what that area is. Um, I don't quite remember. I think I actually had, I had something here, but I, I deleted it. I, I'll go back probably later and look at it. Um, but it was definitely tapping directly into this area. Cause I had this here, um, probably from the left and tapped in. Then what? what happened that made us know we could possibly go long from here if we wanted to we had the shift remember candlestick structure low high low run of the high come back into the area it's probably like 80 90 percent and then take us to the top side so that's how you can find buys in well sells into buys or buys into sells because you're you're placing these rules on areas of interest for you this needs to happen first in order for you to look for a trade not a tap into the area a tap into the area does not need to happen you need to notice some type of pattern taking place when it gets to your area to give you confidence to get in and you'll realize that you stay out of a lot of losing trades because of that you do not end up with a bunch of losing trades when you have those rules and when you follow those rules. Like price dipped down here, took out this low, but then came above here. It didn't run the high. So because it didn't run the high, I know that this is still bearish. If I had the high ran, then price would come back into this area. I would get out here and then take a trade long from this area. But because I still saw that price was still bearish, even though it had this huge push down followed by this huge push back up, it still didn't take out the structural area it need, needed to to flip bullish. So I knew this was still bearish. And that's what you get. And so you have price pushing down here. Now you see the bearish flip we get one flip here and if you want to play it safe you could wait for a second one because remember i said around areas that you get in you sometimes get a a second touch of that area and then price goes from that area you could wait for the second touch if you want to if you're not feeling too confident about it you can just wait for the second touch because even here price dipped no sorry it it just came right out, flipped back up, and then traded down. Of course, this would have been some, you know, a scout possibly here. But um, if, if I had an area here, you would have price shift below it, come up, touch, might reject away, and come back and touch a second time, and then finally leave the area. So because you have that sometimes, you can just wait for that. You can just be patient on that. And you can catch a trade from a lot of these different areas and not get stopped out because you're prematurely placing, you know, um, stop losses and, and take profits when you don't even really see what price is doing. You don't really have any understanding of what price is doing. So look, we have it. It came all the way back to where this high was remember i said i like to see a couple candles between the area before it returns to get an idea of 
knowing whether we we possibly have some you know some bearish momentum out of this area and we have that so we took the first trade here and there was sure enough a possibility to take another trade here and why is that because we have these series of lows and highs taking us up but then we have a break down and here's one thing that I've been noticing I don't want you guys to to take this entirely for for what I'm saying now because I'm still trying to figure it out but I'm I'm telling you guys because I'm very transparent with my system and my information and I want you guys to be able to look for it as well and maybe you guys might find a system that's 10 times better than mine you know who knows but you can incorporate this in it because if you look at this low that was taken out here you know this one just you know took a crap coming down into this area you know and then push back up you have two areas to trade from. You have this low here that was taken out by this move down. You you have this low, this high. You're looking for price to come and tap back into the area. You see we got this tap here. But then you also have this low here that this took out. So now you could start looking for your pullback within the range of this low and this high. Because this is as far as the candle went when it broke structure to the downside. So you could you could use this if you wanted to. Now with using wicks, there might be a little more fake outs than using a body. Because if you use this here, the body came below this right here. Where is it? Right here. You see the body came below. And then what happened? We had the pull back up. So we, we get the pull back up. We get an area in which we're trading from. We get the exact thing that I like that I said I like to see. I like to see a candle take out the previous high and then trade back within it. And then we had a low right here. And then the next candle came up, take out the high and trade it back within it. So that's still giving me some indication that it's bearish from here. And we end up taking a trade out of here, stops directly below uh, above here. And the area that we were originally anticipating is possibly there. And we'd be taking it down into this area. Because this is an area that we possibly anticipated it coming to. But then we're monitoring this to see, is it going to give us a bullish flip to the top side? And if it gives us a bullish flip, we'll wait until price comes back into the area. And then we'll take it to wherever it's going. We'll take a buy up to wherever it's going. The buy can just be coming back here. Why would it come back here? Look at all of this imbalance that's here. So the areas that have imbalance are more likely to be areas that price taps into and trades away from. So we could potentially have a tap here. And then we might see some bearish behavior setting up up here. And then we'll end up just taking it short. But this is what you want to see. This is what you this is exactly what you want to see. Exactly like this. High, low, high, low, high disrupted the trend with this low. We get a pull back back into this area and now we pull down. And when price gets to our area that we're looking to possibly trade from, now we're just trying to figure out, is it going to give us a bullish flip? Is price going to flip bullish to take us back up here? And you might potentially have that. You might have that here. You could have that with this. 
price flipped above the high. You could have it come back into this area, maybe this supply area here, possibly. And then you could have price flip up just to go here. Tap this, and now it's away again. Or it may not even make it to here. It may just make it somewhere here, in between here. And then take us back away from this entry. Why? Because you could have double touches in in these entries. You could have price certainly touching, you know, an area twice before leaving. And being now that I have got an idea of it, this is actually the high. Sorry, because we're going by the the intermediary structure. And if you look, uh, yeah, if you look right here. Well, this is technically not a high. It's kind of flat there. Um, but either way, we have here as the last high that was created before the low. Yeah, last high that was created before the low. But I think this might have been... Let me see... This was a low. Let me just double check. This was the so the low for this is one one five four. The low for this is one five four. Okay, so this is equal lows. So it was actually this here. This was it here. And when I'm trading by myself, most times I'm noticing this in real time. So this is actually, this is the last high before these equal lows were put in and then price ran it. So after price ran this high here with that wick, this candle opened up traded to our area. What's our area? Our area is this here from this high to the low that was put in that led to the high being ran. So we come back into this area here. And this is where our entry is. Right here. Stops behind here. And we're going long possibly to this area or, or wherever we said it might go. I think we have mentioned that it could potentially go here, here. But if you notice this in real time, look at, look at how effective your, your trades are. And if you are losing, look at what you're losing. You're losing 13 pips. On, on just utilizing candlestick structure and using that to scalp. And if you want to take longer moves, if you want to take moves that you don't have to pay attention to, do it on the five minute, do it on the 15 minute. Those take anywhere from, you know, like 12 hours to 36 or 48 hours to play out. So because those take longer, you may not have to look at the chart as much and notice things as fast because they take longer to, to play out. And you would just look at each candle closure to give you the same story that these smaller candles are giving you. So we get that. We get this flip above here. Because remember, we said that, that was this was a previous high too. But then we also get a flip above this high here. So what do we possibly have? We might have uh, 
a play back into here, back into this area, and then a continuation above. But again, what are we looking at? What is the overall objective of noticing this? We're looking to see if price is going to take us here and show us some bearish behavior to continue down. Or price pulls back in here and then run the high. And a lot of the times we could have a pullback into this area and once price pull ba pulls back into this area, we end up pushing a lot higher because, as I mentioned, this V-shaped pattern that price usually makes is a reversal pattern. It means that price is reversing from a particular area. And that's only if the V-shape is completed with the different structural elements that are taken into account. So we're, we're watching this and observing this, but again, we had an entry down here, which was a part of candlestick structure. There's a possible entry here, which is a part of secondary structure. And if we have a run of these highs, or a run of this high, let's say it runs this high, but doesn't take out this high. We might have a run back into this area because the V shape was completed. And then we get a touch in this area and we go long. But that's just us creating a narrative or a story for what price can do. And if it starts to play out with those rules that we set, then fine. You know, like th those are the trades that, that we will look to get involved with. Those are the trades that we'll look to take. You know, and usually with areas that, that I often see, you know, price may have a reaction from or even run, you get it to where, I mean, we, we explained it earlier that sometimes price would come close to an area and then reject away from it. Just like this. It came close to this area, then gave us a pullback after. So people looking to try and get in from here to maybe run this high here. They got in here trying to run this quick high, but then got pulled back. So anytime price is getting near a particular area and you don't know what structure is doing, you don't chase these little movements don't chase these little highs. You don't have to because you're going to have so many setups present themselves. So many setups within this. This is just between 10 and 12 that, that these setups took place. Between 20, 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock. You know, so, so when you have... Actually, let me see. Yeah, no. So so when you have things like this play out, you know, you can create some confidence in your trading to say, hey, yeah, I could definitely stay in the trade. I could definitely, you know, like continue to take it further down because from, from what, I've, what I'm seeing with price action, I'm not seeing anything that's showing me that price wants to go bullish or go bearish. So because I'm not seeing that, you know, I'm going to continue in to the area that I chose to get in and, I, and I'm going to continue trading that area. Now, if you were to miss this area, there are other areas that you can trade from. Price often retraces as it's going down, it's retracing and heading down. So there's other high probability areas that price can go and touch before continuing. And a lot of the times it's areas that have the imbalance, have the unmitigated supply area. And, you know, you might have it to where price is not ready to come above these highs. So you might even get 
price shifting all the way up here and it could put in a third high for you. It's not a higher high, but it could put in a third high for you somewhere in this area. And then continue to trade away. But these are these are things that you just want to look for when when you have this setup. You know, or, or when you're when you're using these techniques to actually trade from. These are things that you you want to consider to either get in a trade or stay in a trade. You know, like it's 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 very, very good to use. And and this area here, remember what I talked to you guys about in terms of like, you know, what people use to say whether they're going short or long from an area. Now, granted, they use this on like the 30 minute time frame, not necessarily the one minute, but they use this to judge whether price is going to, you know, either give them a sell coming out of there or give them a a buy to go up. So they'll wait for price to go above the area, tap back into it, and then take you long. Or they'll wait for price to reject twice from this area and then take it short. So there are many different systems and formulas that they have and that they create for, you know, how they're going to... Um, essentially utilize the the price action and and what they're going to get into their trades with and you see look you got one rejection two rejection three rejection going in for a sell taking you out bringing you up here but you said that well they mentioned that if there was a closure below this area you have price rejecting and closing below this area then it's definitely a sell coming out of there Stops directly behind the area. All right, let's go, gang. Let's go, chat. They take it down, and then it whips them back up. Why? Because we are absent of structure. We do not know what structure is doing right now. So if we're not aware of what structure is doing, then we should not be just randomly taking these, these things and placing them on here. Like, look, they go just like this. Oh, it used to be support, resistance, support, now a little more resistance. Oh, now we got the break above. So then they see the, sorry, they, they see the break above the area here, and they go like this. All right, price comes there. If it comes back and tests the area and gets rejected, we're going to take it long, just like that. And I'm not saying that that this can't happen. Because yes, this can this can very well happen. Yes, absolutely right. This can happen. But if you're just doing this everywhere across the map and there's no like real structure for you, then you end up getting stopped out most times. You end up getting it to where they're like, oh, you know, yeah, that was a fake out. Price pushed above, but ended up coming all the way back down below. Oh, yeah, chat, we got hit with a fake out. You know, they, they go like they do that exactly. We got hit with a fake out. Because they're not paying attention to the actual price action of things. They're paying attention to this little support turn resistance turn support and there there are people who are profitable with it but if you're going to use that use it with structure use it with structure so we we had saw this trade here and remember what i said i said if you see a bullish flip if you see any type of bullish behavior that's happening down in this area then now you're looking to take price long. So we, we were discussing this and, you know, we kind of had it to where 
you know, we missed this one because we was looking at something over here. And then we saw this area. Price never came to this area. But if you were in this trade and you noticed that we had this pullback, we noticed that this pullback was present before this high was even taken. So your area to get out here is on the pullback of this. And your area to get into a buy is where you're selling out. Now, of course, it wouldn't have been here. It would have more so been over here after all of this price action happened. But you're selling out here. So now that you've sold out and you bought in, remember, we said we want bearish behavior to take place here. If bearish behavior doesn't start to take place in this area, we're looking to take this further. And I said it could potentially run the highs. So we have the highs being ran and no bearish behavior took place for us to even consider getting out. Yeah, to even consider us be uh, us getting out. So what did I say? You might have this high ran. And then you might have a pullback into the area after this high is ran. Before running this. But this could just wick up and run it and then fall. But we're, we're watching price to see how to manage our trade. We would have already been out of this. We saw a bullish flip here. There's no reason why you're staying in this if you see the bullish flip. You get out when it flips bullish. You get out on the retracement of it. When it retraces here, that's where you get out. But that's also where you get in and take it long. But you're not playing like that unless you actually know the signs of a retracement. And for me, the safest way to, to understand that or to, to learn that is with candlestick structure. The first thing I'm going to do is see the retracement on candlestick structure. The second thing I'm going to do is confirm with secondary structure if it's actually happening. So we had a small bullish break that's probably on a secondary time, like a seconds time frame. Then we had a bullish break again on the secondary structure. Lower time frame flip, secondary structure flip on our time frame that we're trading on. Pullback. We didn't get the pullback exactly into the area that we were looking for, but we had an indication to get out. And we had two signs, candlestick structure, and we had secondary or intermediary structure on our time frame. Two flips on two different time frames, letting us know that price is, is confirming again that it's going bullish. So we got two confirmations, and that was two ways to get it. Just like you might have two confirmations of the um, the flip here, tap into the area, but then saw the flip, and that's your second confirmation, and you take it long. Just like you have that. You also have other confirmations that you could use. Bullish flip on a lower time frame. Bullish flip on the time frame you're trading on. And we're taking it long. And where are we taking it? Possibly to our targets here. But we know that price isn't going to go straight there. So what are we looking for? If we know price isn't going to go straight there. We said that we wanted the highs to be ran first. And when the highs are ran, we might have a bearish pullback into the area. And you could have a pullback into the area before it going long. But you also want to pay attention to these areas. These. Why are these areas important areas? Because according to intermediary structure, you have the low, you have the high, you have the low created, you have another high being put in. So this is an important low for us. Now, according to candlestick structure, 
this breaks a lot faster than than uh, uh, you know the the secondary structure. This breaks a lot faster. A lot faster. So this isn't technically a low here because this wasn't a high. This was an equal high. So because this was an equal high, this never gave us a high and then a low. So this gave us the same high, gave us a low here. No, actually, this, this doesn't count as a low. This validates as the low. This right here to the downside. So in terms of candlestick structure, this is the low that this gave us when it broke above. And then now you have a break above to here. This becomes the important low. So as you keep seeing price break to the top side, you want to make sure that you're spotting areas or updating those areas as your protected lows. Protected lows is, is the area where smart money, where the banks are trading from. So you get a protected low here, right here. And now you have this high and you know if we tap into this area, come back below, take out this low, we might have a retracement back into this area and then trading away from the area. And where could be we be possibly trading to unmitigated areas? But when you get to these areas, you want to make sure that you're noticing the bullish flip in this area, because if it happens in this area, then you know that you can take it further. You can take it long. You may not be able to take it to the high. You may be able to take it to another area that's that's possibly somewhere here that price may get rejected from and then go. But you want to see the bearish behavior happen on the top side first. And then you know, all right, I'm getting out. And I'm going short. You know, so there you go. You you have a tap into this area. Where we we talked about this entire thing. We we talked it all the way through with the reasons as to why we got into any of these trades or why we would have got into any of these trades and you would be able to be profitable because your timing, it's patience. It, it's patience because it pays. And the part that they don't really tell you about is the, is the deafening silence, the fear of it possibly not getting to the area that you want it to go. The fear of what if it goes back towards my stop loss. The fear of I just lost four days in a row. Now I might lose five. Let me just sit out. And that's what messes us up with, with trading this way. That's what ruins our mindset when it comes to approaching the market. And then we come in here and we don't actually see certain setups that we can take. Because our mind is just somewhere else. But now, whether I'm in a good mindset, whether I'm in a bad mindset, because I've learned this so much and because it's so burned into my brain, now I know that even when I wake up from my sleep, I could immediately come into the market and find a trade. <laughs> I don't have to do any of that top-down stuff. If I just want to come in here and just scalp, don't even care about what's happening on the high time frame, don't care about... You know, using my brain muscle at all to to make any moves. I may not care about that at all. And I may just want to come in and get a little scalping going on. This is the exact system you can do this with. Because you can do this with scalping. You can do this with swing trading. You can do this with any type of trading on any type of time frame. This all happens the same exact way. And if you want to know if the market is, you know, bullish or bearish... For the long term, this is exactly what you do. You start to analyze what exactly is happening. So what do we have with this time frame? We have the low. We have the high here. 
and then we have this low that drops it's validated by taking out this low and then we have a trade above so we shouldn't be worried if we see price shifting up and then there's a pullback later on into the day where could the pullback go the pullback could possibly go into this area right here and then take us further maybe up to here or maybe this can just continue to run this take us down here into this area there's no low here price opened up and just kept pushing so we have within this low, which is at 31,200, and we would possibly have this high, which is at 32,600. And price can do whatever it wants in between here. It could range each day next week in between here. We just know that this is the area that it's ranging in. But if we do get a pullback before taking out this high, and the markets the market can go right to the high at, at like 575 let's say and then start to pull all the way back here into this area at 316 317 and everybody's like oh the market's falling again it's bearish the bears are in control the but the market is it, it shows that there's a there's a potential flip happening so if there's a potential flip happening, that's not a bearish market. That's a retracement to continue long. And if you were trading on the stock market, that's the area that you would be loading up your stocks on right here at this pullback. You'd be loading up all of your stocks on that area and then you'll see a substantial increase in, in your stocks if you just wait it for timing. Why are we expecting a pullback here? Because also there's possible imbalance. From this wick all the way to the next candle open, which is Monday or Sunday, I think it is Sunday in the afternoon, next candle open, you might have the next candle open up and come in to fill this imbalance that's created. Or you might have price just wick back into this area, close here, or even close here if it wanted to, and then Sunday or Monday's candle opens up and takes you further above. So it's not a continuation of bearishness unless it goes below 31,200. There's a possibility that it runs there. But we stated that our bias was bullish for the day. Why? Because we saw that this high was ran and we said we could possibly make it up to this high. That's why I said the the analysis in the mornings is literally like two minutes because we have our bias for the day and we end up dropping down to the one minute i mean sorry the one hour to pick up a little more of our bias and what do we have here we said that this was an important high to run right here which, yes, I mean, we see that it was important. There was a rejection from this area that took us down. That rejection that took us down, you guys remember where where that was from, right? Let me go back to this, sorry, right here. You guys remember where the, that rejection was from here in this trade that we took? In this trade coming out of this area heading down to here then flipped bullish and this is where you get out and then you have the bearish I mean the, the bullish flip that takes you up to what the area that we're trading from and what did I say when it taps this area I said because it'll run this high and tap this area you could get a rejection away from it what do we have exactly when we tap into the area? A rejection. And this rejection away doesn't mean that this is going to come all the way down now. We have all of this to fill up. No. 
this this rejection on this what was this a one hour area? No, that doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean oh we're gonna go from here all the way to running all the lows. We could have a rejection out of this area and price push further up. It can go just like this here, here. And then it comes here, creates a weak high, takes out the low, comes back in, retraces, and then takes us down to the area that we're looking to trade from, whether it's here, or whether it's this second area, or whether it's this third area down here. But we have all this room in, in the coming day or week or whatever it is, we have all of this room here to trade within. So this is 32.3 and 31.4 or 31.3 if, if you want to just keep it exact. So yeah, you have all of that areas or all of that area that price could trade into after being rejected from here. But then make no mistake, it could also go up into the middle of the area and then reject out of there and take us down to whatever whatever area it's going to mitigate and then a continuation or a break above this. So I know a lot of people are bearish on the market because all of the falling that is done over the past, you know, whatever time. Um, like I said, we got a bullish flip earlier um, last night, actually yesterday. Then we had price push up a little more um, today. If you look at the S&P, the S&P is what all the stocks follow. Every, like, not all of them. Let me actually give factual information. The indices follow S&P. Because if you look at the indice right here, um, this is actually S&P as well, but this is S&P on the, the stock market. This is SPY. This is an option that people trade, but it's a mirror of the actual S&P market. So this was the S&P market. This is... You know, we, you see, we started out open and had this huge push up. And that's crazy. How how far was this push? 768 pips since we opened. That's outrageous. I mean, I, some people catch these whole pushes up. Usually me, I'd scalp in between this and probably end up with more than this whole push. You know, because you can time a lot of these moves. So you can be buying and selling on the market. But we had this push up, and if you look at the other stocks, I mean, sorry, the, the other indices, we had the same push up. NASDAQ, same push up, and this is all from 930. Japan, same push up. Germany, same push up. Hong Kong, same push up. They all follow each other. But they mostly follow this S&P here, the US 500. So if you ever want to, you know, kind of like get an idea of what could be happening or, or what may happen next in the market, time it with this. Time it with, with US 500. And when you time it with this, since this is the heavy mover in the market, and this has stocks that are on these other stock exchanges as well, this moves those other exchanges. So this is a second thing to kind of, you know, give you an idea of maybe the market is, is bearish today. And, and I will say, though, there are times that this is pushing up and other markets are pushing away. Japan might be pushing away because they're in a recession or whatever might be taking place. You know, Germany might have had a terrorist attack or whatever it is, or London. You know, Hong Kong could be dealing with COVID and all of those things are shifting these markets down, but this market is still pushing up. But the likelihood of Hong Kong dealing with COVID and, and having issues, that will affect our market too, because we're a huge consumer um, when it comes to the, the products that the, the, con the country has. So you can time this during a New York session. Pay attention to this during a New York session. And this will kind of be your guide on trading any other indice that you possibly trade. Because look, all of them are retracing now. Each and every one of them are retracing. 
they all have slightly different levels, you can see, because some markets are open and some markets are not. Slightly different levels. This even, super different level than, than S&P has. S&P has this little bit here, it's consolidating sideways, but kept pushing up. You know, and they have this huge dip followed by this slow, you know, push up. And that happens because they're not trading right now within this this market. It's 12 o'clock. The trading day is done. But their market still follows ours. Because all the money intertwined in these different systems and stuff, there's you, you could definitely use this as a guide during a New York session. And if you're trading in the Asian session, here we go. Use Hong Kong. Use Japan. Use these to to trade the asian session trade with asian pairs because there's more money more volume involved within that time frame because look at this let me let me actually just show you guys this i know you guys are probably like shut up and go to the charts but this is is, is useful information for me this is how i was using six hundred dollars to make a thousand dollars a day because i was i was paying attention to to the things that happen so look at this this is Seven o'clock right here. This is seven o'clock. Asian session yesterday. So this is eight. This is seven. Right here. Look at this. Look at this madness. Look at this. Outrageous. You know why this happened? Because Hong Kong came out and said, well, Shanghai, sorry. Shanghai, one, adopted Bitcoin as a, a virtual currency within the country. So now it's legalized to own the asset as a virtual currency after they were just going through a bunch of banning and relisting and banning and relisting. So now you have that push up that added into that. You also have it to where they're kind of getting their COVID situation under control. Because before it was affecting the markets, their COVID situation was tanking the markets. This was back in, and this is not even just, if I go to the daily, it goes further out, but it was tanking the market. But their COVID situation got better and look how quickly the market rebound. You know, you have it coming down to this area. A day in 18 hours, I think that said. A day in two hours. You know, or a day in an hour. Recovery was quick because those things happen in si simultaneously. So if you want to trade in the Asian session, you could use these principles in the Asian session. I can go, I don't know, just somewhere random. Uh... And see, look, just to be transparent with you guys, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't have been trading in this session anyway. This is this is spread hour. Yeah, so there's there's no way in hell that I've been trading that. So let me move away from that. Um, you know, so you, I mean, th this is just trending up. Really, the, the way that I would have probably got involved in this is you know, until I saw something bearish, possibly. Let me see. Uh, up, came back in, ran the low. Nope, that wouldn't have been taken. Uh, and I, and I'm I'm showing you guys this just to, you know, be transparent with you guys as to, you know, what trades that I would consider taking and what I wouldn't consider taking. So this one here, this is possible. Let me see. Uh, right here. To here you see and that just missed yeah the the just missed it right here wick flew above the area came back in just missed it and left so there there are times where your setup wouldn't actually happen the the way that it's supposed to and that's okay that's fine that's okay you know so this obviously was was 
through the Asian session and into the night that this slowly moves, but this is Hong Kong. The pair that I've seen that, that moves a lot better in a lot of, um, you know, those Asian sessions are this Japan session. Look, look at the bias that I had. This was yesterday. Took a trade here yesterday in the Asian session. This was not the stop loss. I don't know where exactly the stop loss was. The stop loss was here. Right here. Let me see. Yeah. The stop loss was here. The stop loss is right here. And you had a trade come right into this area. What did I mention about the flips? You know, you have this low of a sideways movement that, that could be a high, possibly. You know, but you have this low. Comes up, trades below, gives us our pullback. But what do you also have? Another high being taken out. This high. So what did I say about these highs that are taken out? That could be the thing that, that's causing the retracement. The high being ran. So what do we have here? We had this high ran by this wick. Price pull back into this area. Here's where your stops go. Directly behind there. And you take it long. Obviously, when I saw price push up above this and push up above an area to the left, I said that it would push further. I had this um, yellow yellow candle here before this even started. And um, I said that it would push further, possibly to these areas. Why? Because remember, I talked about volume. You can take it to these areas that have volume. And that would have been the target. You see, we got a little rejection out of there. But then what do we have here? Little rejection out. Then we have price trade above. And what can we see this as? Price traded above the high. After giving us a new low. Traded above the high. We're looking for price to come back into the area. And then we're taking it long. So that's another entry there. And you just follow that system without in any market, whatever it is that you need to analyze, anything that you need to look at, you know, anything that you'd like to trade. I'm telling you, you know, this is Forex. This is stocks. This is everything out there. Everything out there. This is everything. What did I say that, that we would have here? I said that if price came below here, the protected high, we would end up going bearish and possibly going bearish into what area? What area that I said we could go bearish into? The original area that we spotted that price didn't pull back into. Look at what this bad boy did. Came, touched the area. I left. 68 pips. After touching the area. I said we would have a pullback in there. I said when price doesn't come back to this area, you save it. You save it for later. And when it makes it back into this area, then you take it long. And you could either take it long from this particular area here. From this area here to another area, which is, I always say, you know, look to target the S&D zones or the, the structural highs. You know, since we don't have any... Um, really here that's that's um you know like a stronger area of structure this is not so I wouldn't have been taking this to the high I would end up taking it to the midway and then the reaction that I get out of it I'm watching to see if there's a possible sell coming up within this area you know high low high low high then we well actually this is high low high i wonder which one came first let me see 
Yeah, which one came first? So it looks like the high, then the low. So this took us further up, brought us down. Okay, so we'll we'll take a look at this. You know, take a look at this and see how price responds to it. And you could potentially have it where price may, I don't know, come to like this area or maybe even this area. The potential that price taps back into the S&D, rejects away from it, and then takes us down a little more. And this is trading against the trend because what we might have just flipped bullish. So if we just flipped bullish, this may not necessarily be an area that you're shorting from until we see some more bearish behavior. But what, we took out this high. No, we didn't get anything there. And we didn't get any retracement down here. So this would technically, you know, still possibly be bullish unless we see a low ran. But again, this low was ran here. So that puts us in an area where it's, you know, a possible catch 22. We have this that comes up sometimes. You know, these seconds areas that, that it runs. And we want a body closure below, which we got right here, a body closure. Then we had a push up. And remember what I said? The weak high usually runs the low. We could potentially have that. And with this area here and having your stop loss directly behind, you know, like the the traders on YouTube, you know, you you would have garnered 15 pips or so, you know, and partial out, oh, good job, chat, you know, we hit the money, you know, and this is just because you don't know where it's going or you don't have an idea of what potentially is happening with price. So you could have price go down into this area a little further and then come out of the area because we know that this may not be the possible final rejection. What might be the possible final rejection? This here. This area. And this could be the final rejection to send everything down from here. That's a possibility because we still didn't have price come to this area. So we could have it go up to this area, tap, come down to this area, tap, and then take us up into this area here. And that could be a possibility with the movement of price. So it's taking out the lows, running the highs, running the lows again, specifically some of the equal lows possibly, coming back into an area that it left earlier today, and then trading long from it. And that's how you create a bias for what could potentially be happening with price. And even though I have this, I'm still looking at price overall. I'm still paying attention to in here. So yes, I see it. I, I see this happening. I'm not jumping into a cell right here just because I, I had it possibly going down to this area then back up. I'm not doing that. Because that's reckless. For me, what I'm doing is waiting for price to come to my optimal areas. The areas that, that price is, is most likely to react from not trying to catch a ride with price to, you know, the areas that I'm going. So if this invalidates and this pushes up to here, it doesn't necessarily mean that the rest of this is, is not true. 
It can just be this one area. And this area can push into here, tap out of there, run all the lows that it was establishing along these areas, run all the lows, take out all the stop losses here, run the lows on the bottom side here, tap into this area that went unmitigated, and then start running the highs from the top side with the people selling in. So that's why you never stay in a trade on this time frame and expect it to go within a daily time frame because there's a bunch of pullbacks within that area to get there. And, you know, depending on where your stops are, it could easily get hit. So more than likely you want a pullback that that's going in a daily direction and you're hoping to catch the top or the bottom of that. And how do you catch the top and the bottom with that? With these same principles that we teach every day here on this chart. Every single day, we teach these principles. And you could use these trading anything. And the way you become better at it is, truthfully speaking, the more time that you put in. If you put in a good amount of time to study, to learn, and observe these things happen when they're happening. I'm telling you, your whole life will be changed. Your trading style, you'd find it that it's a lot easier for you to come into the market, spend an hour a day, maybe an hour and 30 minutes, and then just get out of there. No reason for you to stick around. And you'll learn that, you know, with, with things like this. I remember what I told you guys about the, the equal high here. I mentioned with the equal high that, or, or at least with the highs that don't necessarily take the high that it's going to run, it comes close to it, inches up, and then trades away. Because you have a lot of traders that see these candles pushing up and they're like, oh, that's a great time to get in. Wow, let me jump into this. And what happened? They're, they're stopped out. Yeah, they stopped out. So you want to pay attention to, to these equal highs that happen because oftentimes, you know, like I said, you have a huge push away from that area. So you don't want to chase it. And then you end up with like this three candles pushing up, go directly to the area, come back down. And this one candle here is like 20 pips inside of it. 22 pips in this one candle. So you jumped in trying to chase on this and it pulled you all the way back. Which could potentially pull you further back to maybe even the, the area that we discussed here. And then you take the L because you realize that it's a possibility of it not coming back or you over leveraged and now you have to hedge in a sell while you're in this buy and you don't know where this sell is going. Meanwhile, you don't even know where the buy is going either. So you don't want to chase these because then you end up in those predicaments where, you know, now you, you have to cut your loss. You're unaware of it if it's going to come back. And if it does come back, you might have been in a sell just trying to stop the bleed. You know, so you, you just, you just want to be mindful of that. And that would help with your trading. Go through my earn and learn series. I'm probably going to add this into the earn and learn series as well, but go through the earn and learn series. There's so much information on my playlist, the earn and learn playlist. So much. Oh my gosh. People are like, why aren't you charging for this? This is great information for people to learn and actually trade from. No, because it's, it's free. I make my own money. Trading, that's my job to trade. But I love, I'm, I'm very passionate about teaching and I'm very passionate about helping people understand things that they may not necessarily be able to grasp without somebody helping them. And why is it that, you know, everything needs to be a charge? We're in a recession or we're heading into one. It's going to get worse. You're taking people money so you could make money on top of the money you already make doing trading unless most of your time is going towards actually helping people consulting people then i could understand where the 
you know, the charge is coming from. But I could come on and do this any time of the day. I could have insomnia. I can't sleep and I can get up and trade and make money and be profitable. You you guys see all of this coming out. Go into any YouTuber's channel. Search their name. Raja Banks, uh, uh, Control FX, uh, Champion Pips, all these different people, which I'm not saying that, that they're bad traders and I'm not speaking bad about them, but I'm saying go into their streams. Look at how many trades they take a day. That might be sufficient to take one trade for them. But for me, since I trade on one minute and since I have such precision with, with the skills that I've, I've developed, I'm like, hey, why not just, you know, trade any time of the day, take any amount of trades that I want to take? You know, like people are like, don't over trade, don't have... Don't, because if you overtrade, what's going to end up like all of that, please cut it out. Leave me alone. Like, just, I, I don't care about that at all. Because skill is skill, regardless of what environment you're in. That's why when, when gifted children are taking exams for for giftedness, watch this candle here, um, because it just wicked below the candle to the left and could possibly... Um, start to pull to the upside from here but with gifted kids when they take exams they take them to even in kindergarten they take them to an entirely different school with different staff and nobody that they know and when they when they take that exam they're in, in an environment that's completely unfamiliar to them and why do they do that because when you're gifted it should show in every single environment that you're in your gifted your giftedness should show in every environment that you find yourself in every single environment and i think that this is possibly gonna um shift down from here because this might be a uh, wyke off um up here so you could have a shift further down into um this area here um, there's a possibility just because this looks like distribution right here. This is a distribution schematic. So if you were still in this trade, um, there's a possibility that you can take it to, you know, these areas. This being the first area here, because this was an area that wasn't tapped in to. Remember I mentioned that, that we might have the trade come into this area and then leave it. There's a possibility that it can. Again, these lines that I use, they're just essentially you know, giving me some guide to what price can do, but price doesn't necessarily have to do that. Price can do something else. What we want to know is we want to see bullish behavior. Remember, we discussed that. We want to see bullish behavior happening down here to get some idea or some indication that we should get out of a trade. So look at this. 10 pips. For 96 taps right into our area that we were looking to short from up here now we did mention this area here too but did we see any bullish behavior here no we didn't so if we don't see bullish behavior we're not looking to get out of a trade you can take it and close here and and maybe a partial and now you have runners heading down, or you can just continue to hold if you understand what price is doing. But as I just mentioned, I said, this looks like distribution up here. So this could potentially take us further down. The first area being here, which this bullish, I mean, sorry, this bearish engulfing candle coming through this area is not a good sign at all. Like I would not even have any hopes for price coming up from this area to target the highs because this candle pushed directly through the supply area that's here. Yeah, it tapped into this one, but it could tap into this one here to take us back up here to take us back down here. And when you understand that, when when you have rules that that shows you that, I know all of this seems crazy to like somebody that might have just came on or something, but when you have the rules to this, then now you begin to get some idea of how you could trade this. 
And what do I mean by rules? Remember we said that if this low was ran, this low here, we had this candle in the beginning. If this low is ran, which we had the run of this low here, we could potentially be shifting down. But after we ran this low, what did we have? A push up. And we made a higher high. Now, according to institutional structure, this low is the protected low. But this low signifies some sort of trend reversal for me or some sort of trend change. Intermediary trend change. Not necessarily overall trend change. Because this may be institutional structure on a higher time frame here, here, here. This is the last low here. So you have this low, this high, this low, and then this high that was put in. So now if we run this low, which that's what we're doing now. Now that could mean that institutional structure is shifting. The larger time frame structure is shifting. And what you could have is that price trades up here, shifts below, and then after it shifts below, we get a retracement back into this area here. And then we get a short to run some of these lows. Maybe this being the first low ran. We get a short here. But where could we possibly short to? We could run this low immediately, touch this line, and then immediately push back up. If you don't get a candle closure below the low, then it's not a break of structure. I don't consider it a break of structure. The candle needs to close below it to be considered a break of structure because that's how you avoid less fake outs. So, you know, as I mentioned, I said that this would, if this ran this like this with this bearish engulfing candle, you know that price is going to continue to go through the area. And what do we have? We had a run all the way into this area here, and we could potentially get a run of the low. Again, this is a wick that ran this low. Like I said, I need a body to close down here, and not a body to just close, like, you know, just over it. I need a body to close, like, further down, like somewhere in this area. If I get a body closure, then that's a break of structure for me. And then price is reversing to go short. But if price doesn't come back to this area and break the low, I'm not expecting it to come short down here. I'm expecting it to continue long. And that's how you, you, um, you know, set up your rules. Uh, do you trade with real money right now? Uh, the watcher, yes, I, I do trade um, with real money. I don't trade prop firm, you know, demo I'll use, you know, like through the night if if I'm just like trying to figure out where something is going to go and I want some gratification for for the trade actually playing out. Um, I'll use demo uh, sometimes, but um, no, I only trade uh, real capital um, if I'm not like learning if, if I'm actually trading, then it's just real capital and it's my own money that I'm using. I'm not using um, a prop firm or, or anything else. And I understand, I'm not saying that it's it's wrong for, for um, you know, other people to, to use prop firms because if you don't have access to the capital, then, you know, of course, it's a no-brainer. You can have a $200,000 account if you are skilled enough to pass the evaluation, which those are nothing when it comes to the way I trade here, those evaluations, uh, I, I could probably do one in the future um, to show how easy they are. But, um, you know, you can take that, use that money to trade, build up your own account and then move forward with your own account. But I actually started to um, build up my own account just using six hundred dollars. So I would use six hundred dollars a day and I would make a thousand dollars on oil just using six hundred dollars. And then I would move on to being able to like, you know, make larger amounts of money throughout the day, build my account, um, take some stuff out for profit. But then now I'm so precise and fine tuned that I don't necessarily need a large amount of money in my account. 
if I have a certain set amount of money, I could make twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars a day if I wanted to, with just a smaller portion of money rather than having all of the money in in my account. So uh, no, I don't I don't know traders reality. Um, I've never heard of it. Is that like some type of a group or something like that. I'm not too sure. Let me see if I could uh, find them on YouTube. Traders reality. Uh, no, actually, I don't. Yeah, I don't know them. Let me turn that off. Look him up on YouTube. All right. Let's. Uh, oh, what happened here? Sorry about that. So here he is. Uh, Traders reality. Let me just. Take a look at this. Um, does he have any live trading? Let me just. Any live streams, maybe? Oh, okay, yeah, he does. Reverse or just... Let me... Sorry, sorry about that, guys. I didn't know that the, the sound would be like that. Let me just turn it up a little bit. Too much blood on the street. From this point, we need to make sense of it on the smaller to on the actual block map itself to see the commitment of traders. Lots of liquidity coming in just below 30k. So Yeah, he he has some um pretty good analysis from what I'm seeing here. He is utilizing the imbalance, which you know I use at times too. I see him using a little volume. Um actually with Bitcoin, he's on the daily, so um let me actually go there. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like uh, with Coinbase, this came down to 25,000. I did have it coming to this area right here. You see this area? I had it just mitigating the area and maybe giving us a bounce to the upside. This was clearly a, a manipulation, you know, with this. Like, there's no way. You look at anywhere on the map and it happens at the like the most high profile uh, moments um, within some of this uh, price movement. So this here, like there was absolutely nothing really in the market, like anything globally that should have shifted price um, this way. This is, I, I didn't expect this to happen, but now I do have it to where if it runs um, this high here, then we can get a retracement back into this area and then we can go along. Um, so he's right about this area holding. This area would need to hold, give us a bullish flip and then take us further up. But it could just come back into this area here, um, into the 39 area and possibly uh, here to the 45 area. So these are two areas, the, the 39 and the 45, 46 area, um, Bitcoin could possibly bounce back up to have a huge push up and then a continuation down. So if there's anybody that got in at these areas or maybe these areas up here, it'll be back to break even. But if anybody bought down here, they could sell out, you know, kind of like up here or maybe up here. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to um, definitely look into that guy, you know, just to like learn a little bit more about him because a lot of the streamers, I tend to watch a lot of them. And when I watch them, you know, I kind of get an idea of what the retail space is learning, what people are learning on trading. And I try to like, you know, shape those into better methods to trade in. Like when I always talk about the head and shoulders and all those double bottoms, those different patterns that people trade, I can show you how to trade them using better technicals rather than just the shapes of the pattern. 
So um, you have mentioned Luna. Um, I'm guessing it's Luna USD. Damn, Luna went to hell. Is this really in the negative? Maybe let me check another <laughs> another uh, chart. Maybe. Whoa! What the? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was actually gonna buy some Luna up here when it was like in the seventies. Yo, this is crazy. <laughs> What a fall. Oh, my gosh. See, th this is why you manage your risk, though. Have those stop losses. I'm sure this probably happened real quick. Let me go down to um, the one-minute time frame. And... Oh, we, we, do have some, we do have a pop to the upside. Okay, that's, that's not looking so bad, but it looks worse than the fall. Look at this. And mind you, this is... Um, this is one minute candles, you know? Uh, wow. Because look at how large they are in the dissension and then in the area that it finally found support at. I guess I could call the support, you know? It just, yeah, this, this is, oh no, this, oh yikes. Oh my gosh. Any bag holders that were here, you know, like, I'm I'm just I want to say a prayer for you, you know. I I hope that God comforts your heart because it's never coming back up here again. I can tell you that much. You might as well just get out of that. When when these happen, you know, in in a lot of different instruments, you will never see the return of this again. Never like this. For, for all of existence, Luna is never returning to this market ever again. Like, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's over. Uh, if you have any Luna and it's, it's in profit, you know, get rid of it. If you want to day trade it, you can. I will say that. Um, let me go to. Yeah, if you want to day trade this, you, you can, you know, day trade it if you want to. Um, but it's. It's not looking the best right now. You know, like you you could have a possible uh, dip into this area and then get like a little bounce up, you know, or a possible dip into this area because price didn't return there after it flipped. And then possibly have like a... a <coughs> Sorry about that. A stronger bounce up um, to here. If you were to trade this using, you know, the one minute, um, that's a possibility. Um, I would probably wait for it to. Let's see. Pushed up, ran the high, came back into the area. So this ran. Yeah, back into this area, you have this short that engaged from here. See, this stop is too high, though. This is this is the stop loss is way too high, and and then possibly like target somewhere out of the area. Maybe this this structural low here, um, you could potentially have that ran because this was the low that took out the low to the left that's a possibility but you know other than that there's there's no way um, that that's coming back yeah six trillion is the supply yeah that's that's way too much unless they were looking for for it to be a currency that they were adopting to to use in a specific car a specific country and that country you know was was using it as a legal tender or the other way that they could have used utilized this was that they could have used this for a banking infrastructure network like the US Federal Reserve to be able to run most of the money that they have in circulation electronically. So that would have been a way, but yeah, that's that's way too much. It lost all its value over um you know that excess in printing 
you know, no function as of yet. You know, there's a bunch of reasons as to why um, that that happened. But yeah, you definitely want to stay out of things that that are overinflated like that. That's why I told people Doge isn't going anywhere. Doge is going to stay exactly where it's at or get worse because there's no function. There's no utility other than what? Sending money to someone else that they don't have to use that. There's so many other coins that are way faster than Doge. You know, so that's just something that that you um want to consider um, when when buying these these cryptocurrencies. You just want to be careful of that. So this could this could either uh, go here to again assume the high, or this can just be coming to this line here to to continue running the lows. That's a, a potential. Um, so if it does that, then, you know, you could expect a bearish continuation into this area. Yeah, that's, it was under a million before the crash. So it seems like somebody, you know, there's a quick amount of money somebody got out of that. If it was under a million and it printed to six trillion, that's, that's crazy. But um, this is the... End of my stream, guys. You know, I always love talking with you guys, engaging with you guys. I think I want to push the stream back further than 930 because I see that a lot of people, they're still on throughout, like, you know, the, the 1030 time frame or, or even 1130. There's more engagement that starts then. So, um, you know, I'm thinking about moving the stream back for a certain time. Uh, did I see your question? Do you know about the lovely market makers? Yes, I do know about the market makers. Um, you know, and, and the way they do things to their job is to balance the market, but they tend to manipulate it a lot on the behalf of, um, certain clients. So, you know, I do know about them. Yes. Um, but again, uh, you know, I'm here every day, 930 to 1130. I'm thinking of move, moving it back to maybe 10 or 1030. So things are a bit calmer and I could immediately come into the market and start teaching. And then, you know, I could end somewhere around one. You know, so there's there's a lot more opportunity to get into more trades between 11 and 2 o'clock because those are the steady hours of trading and the more volatile hours come in between 2 to 4 and 9 to 11 o'clock. So I can do that if, if that's a better way to teach and, and it's a slower way to help people learn um, and utilize these concepts. Yeah, that that's exactly what it is. It's it's the liquidity providers that that they're definitely making money on the behalf of their clients as well as you know screwing over the retail investor. So yes, they they do manipulate price, you know, a lot. Um especially Citadel, Citadel, BlackRock, all those different companies, they they are not working for us at all. So anything that they're doing, you want to pay attention to and guard yourself from those practices because their only job is to create profit for the people that they're working for. So, um, or, or the special interests that they're on the behalf of. So, um, I'll, I'll be back here tomorrow, probably 10. Um, like I said, you guys can reach out to me on Instagram, on Twitter, on Telegram. All my links are in the about page. I do this every day, all day. This is my whole life. So if you guys ever want to reach out and ask any questions in regards to anything, you guys could always, you know, just come there and, and, you know, I'll always be willing to analyze anything real quick. Analyzing takes less than two minutes for me. So, um, you know, you guys could always reach out to me then. If you like what you saw, you could hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on, turn on the notification bell. I'll probably do some surprise streams in the future, but this is the format that we do streams in every single day. And we have so many trades here that you can take and actually be profitable with, you know, I'm always just helping you to nurse the trade, helping you to understand the direction, the timing, the, the flips, the momentum. This channel is specifically for education and it's education the right way, not education, the shortcut way. So I'm glad that you guys stuck around. You guys listened in. I hope you guys learned something from this. If you did, don't hesitate to hit the like button and I'll see you guys tomorrow at 10.